Have you or a loved one ever suffered from wet filament? ButterPockets Pharmaceuticals reports that four out of five 3D printers will suffer from this completely preventable problem at some point in their lives. With one easy payment of absolutely smashing the like button, you could end the suffering of one 3D printing nerd. So I joke, but wet filament is something that we all have to deal with in 3D printing. All filament absorbs moisture, and filaments like nylon will absorb it faster than, say, PLA, but it's a problem you're going to have to deal with. I see people online all the time. They'll post the picture of their prints, and they'll say, what's wrong with this? And the answer will be that your filament is wet. And they'll say, well, I just opened this roll. It's brand new. Even brand new filament can be wet from the factory, and it's something you're going to have to address. Filament actually, when they spool it off of the machines, they run it through water to cool it down. So it's gonna be wet. So the best thing you can do is have some way to address that. I actually have a roll of PLA that's been sitting on my Mark IV for a couple weeks. And I was away for a week on business travel and I came home and the filament had actually snapped at the extruder. No one's been in here, no one's touched it. It had gotten wet enough in a roughly 30% humidity room that it had gotten so brittle, it just snapped off at the extruder. So what can you do about it? Well, you can delay the inevitable with desiccant and proper filament storage, but eventually the filament is gonna get wet and you're gonna have to get that moisture out of there or else you're gonna have brittle PLA, zits and uneven extrusion and problems where you just shouldn't have problems. So Fix Dry actually sent over their double spool filament dryer, which is the double NT1 model. And I want to run a small test to see if this thing actually works. I really haven't liked a lot of the options that are on the market for filament dryers. I personally actually use a food dehydrator for drying my filament and it works really well. If you look it up, some places will even say you can use your microwave or your oven. Please do not put your 3D printer filament where you cook your food. It's a bad idea. You should never do that. So now let's open this bad boy up and take a look at some of the features that this thing has. This thing has the ability to fit one three kilogram roll or two one kilogram rolls, which you can see here. And the rolls will spin freely because you can actually just print straight out of this thing if you want to with the included PTFE tube and all the points that you can choose to route your filament out of. Let's take off the protector and push the power button. Push this button down here and you will instantly start selecting what temperature you want to print at. And you can go up or down. Push it again and you'll select the hours that you want the timer to go for. Push it again and you get the minutes. And push it again and you're done. Throw on the top and it will heat for as long as you set the timer for. Inside there is this diffuser that you can take out that spreads the heat. And there you will see the heater which also has a fan and heats up very quickly. Here are all the points that you can route your filament out of if you want to print straight out of this thing. Oh, and I forgot to mention that this is the humidity sensor right here. And on the top, you have those really important holes for all the moisture to actually escape out of the dryer. So how do we test this thing? Well, I have a brand new roll of Atomic PLA that I'm going to open up and we'll do a couple test prints on it just to see how it prints right out of the bag. Then I'm going to stick it in a box with a humidifier so it can get nice and saturated with water after a couple hours and I'm going to stick it outside where it's a little more humid than it is in my house. We'll try to print with it and see if I can show you some of the issues that wet filament will cause. Then we'll chuck it in the dryer and see if we can save this roll of filament. Okay, it's the next day and two things right off the rip. Number one, strep throat jumped up and bit me in the butt overnight, so my voice sounds scratchy. That's why. Two, my science experiment did not really work the way that I meant for it to. I think maybe six hours in the box with the humidifier just wasn't enough time, especially for PLA. So there was really no difference between the three prints, which was when I opened the bag, after I left it with the humidifier for six hours, and then after I dried it. But I'll show you guys the prints so you can make up your minds for yourselves. So on the left, we have right out of the bag, and on the right, we have after all the water. And honestly, there's like just as much stringing in both. So here's a close up of right out of the bag. There's a bit of stringing. And here's after I left it in the humidifier for six hours, it's mostly the same. And this is after I dried it, which it's still kind of the same. Since that experiment didn't turn out the way that I wanted it to, I tried a couple other things. I went digging and found my oldest roll of PLA, which came with my Mark III, 
probably over two years ago. And it's so brittle that it just snaps. So I ran a print with it. And the funny thing is, the print just looks fine. I really wasn't expecting this and it came out perfect. But I figured, hey, let me try to dry this thing and see if I can get it to not be brittle anymore. And I did. I've got a video of before where the filament was just snapping. And I've got a section here where the, it bends and is compliant like PLA should be. So that is a success in terms of the dryer, although it wasn't quite what I was expecting. So now onto desperate measures. I dug into my closet and found a really old roll of PETG, which gets wetter faster than PLA and will suffer more from being wet. So this roll of filament is probably about a year and a half old and I used it to make the enclosure for my Mark III and it hasn't been dried since. It's been sitting in a container with desiccant, but it's just been sitting there getting nice and humid. So I ran one print with it and it looks like crap and it's exactly what I was hoping for. <laughs> Wet filament really will cause your prints to look bad. And this is the perfect example of what I'm talking about. So this one right here, and I'll do a close up. There's so much stringing and this is just looks awful. So what do you do about it? You dry it. So I took the roll after it had already printed and I weighed the filament. Then I dried it for six hours and then I weighed it again. And you can see that there was about a one gram difference between the, the weight before and after it was dried. So roughly 0.15% of the filament's weight minus the spool was removed after it was dried. So some water did come out of the filament or something did, but this is also in line with other videos that I've seen that talk about this topic. So I ran another print after I had dried it. And what do you know? The stringing is gone. How about that? So this print isn't perfect, but some of the symptoms of wet filament did go away. I'm sure the rest of this is tuning related because I just ran this on the stock profile and I ran the same G code on both prints. Filament dryers actually do something and I'm not out of my mind. So this is really nice to see and it was really nice using this dryer to accomplish this. With that being said, if you're into 3D printing, I just want to stress that you should probably get a filament dryer. All your filament is going to get wet at some point. PLA and PETG, maybe not as much as something like nylon, but it's going to happen and you should have something to take care of it. And this dryer from Fix Dry is really nice and I like it a lot. It's super easy to use. You only push a couple buttons and you get it drying right away. It has the heater that heats up really quickly. It has a humidity sensor in it so you can actually tell what the humidity is and it gets really low in there, but most importantly, it has holes in the top. And there's so many others on the market that don't have this. And when you put your hand over it, you can totally feel the hot air escaping, which you might not think it, but this is what you want because this means the hot air is going around your rolls of filament and is escaping. And we know what's escaping with it, the moisture. If you trap the moisture in, it doesn't go anywhere. It stays in your filament roll. So I really like this dryer and it gets the Mrs. Pocket seal of approval by being quieter than my Rosewell uh, food dehydrator. So that's a plus. A big thanks again to Fix Dry for sending this thing out. If you're interested in it, feel free to check it out at my affiliate link down below. They have some really awesome Black Friday deals going on right now, but if you can't make it for Black Friday, you can always use my code at checkout, BPP10, to save 10% off on this thing. So thanks again. Let me know down in the comments if you guys use filament dryers and what your experiences have been with them. Leave a like if you learned something and forget about all this drying your filament stuff because if you subscribe, your filament will stay buttery dry forever. I'll see you guys in the next one.